Hey guys, how are y'all today? Um, evidently there was a little bit of a problem scheduling my live on Facebook. Don't know. If some of you have gotten it. Some of you haven't. It, I just punched the button and it was like, oh, it didn't go. So hopefully y'all are here. You can see. Good to see you, Yvonne. Good to see you, Sharon. <clears throat> um, everybody say hi. Say where you're from. You never know. The person next to you may have software and you can go visit with them and share. So the first thing um, that I have, and this is going to be kind of a short, It's I'm going to cut short today. I have an appointment at 430, so I'll stop just a little bit short today so that I can get there. Um, but the first one is on create, turning SVG files into embroidery in P-Design 11. So that's where I'm going to go to first. And from there, we'll go and see what else takes us. Susan, I see that you have a few questions. Your um, edge to edge quilting, I answered. Oh, Patty, when did I answer that one? Um, we did that a couple of months ago, I believe. But I won't swear to that. Let me hide this down here. Okay, so SVG files and what can you do with them in embroidery? In P Design 11, we can go up to import patterns and choose from vector image. Now, not all SVGs are created equally. I'll show you one that works and one that doesn't work so well. So let's see here. Uh, let's go to this one. <clears throat> These are from Creative Fabrica. Just so you know, whatever hoop size you have selected will be the hoop size that is there, so that it's created in. So this is, I believe I'm in my eight by, excuse me, my, yeah, eight by eight frame. And so that one right there has, has generated the stitches. Everything is already digitized. But from there you can go and um, adjust the direction you can come in and you can change the stitch type so you could come in and choose concentric circles for those if you want or you could choose flexible spirals or if you want to get oh that's kind of cool you could go um, net zigzag fills which will give you a totally different look so you you can customize after you have digitized but as I said, not all SVG files are created equal. That one's one that works really easily. So let me select and delete and come in and let's go from vector image again. And I'm choosing SVG files because that's what I actually um, downloaded. So here's one that doesn't work so well. And all of the parts are over here. You just have to figure out what part is what. So if I wanted my hearts to be red, I'd have to come over into my sewing order window and then select those parts. Go over to my color tab and I could come in and change them to red or pink. So the, the lus right here, let's see here, let's give it a color. My bats, I'm going to leave black. And this is the interior of the boos, or actually that's the O's. So let's make that kind of an orange color. But you, you can see that I'm going to have to work harder on this one than I did on the others. Those are all the interior parts of that. So let's come and grab our stars here and make those yellow. And then here's the B. We could try making that orange and see what if we like it or not. And that's okay. I can live with that. And here's the other O. Let's just pick a color that's already in it. Now here comes the challenging part. Let's grab the fab. And we'll make that back purple, which is down here. That's my color. That's an easy way to color match down here, just so you know. If you're not sure what color you've picked already, that's an easy way to color match. I have no idea what that is, but it appears to be the bow. So let's say we wanted the bow pink. And then these look like the circles in the bows. Let's see. 
So if we make those orange, maybe, yep, that's exactly what those are. Here's the ghost. Let's make him gray or her gray. Then you have eyes, I believe. Oh, no, that's part of that still of the boat. Let's get the rest of the bow. And then we'll get the bow parts. So you can see this one's not near as easy to deal with as the others, as the other one was, because there's, there, it's just not as, it's, it's not as clear. The whole thing is darkened in. So you're trying to figure out what parts, what, and that didn't change its color. So it must be underneath. Huh. Interesting. Looks like we have, this should be on top. Ah, so let's move this behind it. And I'm just moving it up in the area to where it goes with something else that it matches. Oh, here's the other part. Oh, Princess decided to join us. Did y'all hear her shake and say hi? Let's move this one on up. So, like I said, this one's not going to be nearly as easy. Not all SVG files are created equally. Some are going to work better for you than others. And that's still not what I want, but you kind of get the concept that, oh, because I made the pink, the dots pink instead of orange. That's better, but you, you'd have to go around and play with that a little bit more. Now, there is another one that I found. If I go into import vector files and let's see here, um, I believe this is it. Here's a bat. And like I said, it's going to match whatever hoop size I have selected. So it will automatically go to fit that hoop right there. That one's done and pretty much ready to go. You can play with it if you want. You have the ability to come in and change the stitch types for each part. So right now I've got my bat wings. I could come in and put, a, let's put a flexible spiral on those and see what happens. Well, that's kind of cool. And then you could change where that flex is from. So if I come and click on that part right there, I could flick it out here. Don't like that too much. Well, that's, I like it from going from right there. Let's move this one to where it looks like it's going from there. <clears throat> you have control though. So even though the software automatically did it for me, I can go in and change everything that I want to change. Okay. So now if I tried, let's, let's go in and grab the PNG file of this one, just so you can see the difference. If I go to my image tab and I choose auto punch and let's go back in and grab the bat png well, let's change it by name so we can get there faster sometimes it will work and sometimes it won't it depends on the the png file but you'll notice all of a sudden it's bigger so the first thing i need to do is fit it to my page and then touch next totally changes my colors but that's okay as long as it's grabbing everything I want, you can do max number of colors and have it retry to see if you can get more along the lines of what you're looking for. But it looks like it's only seeing eight of them. Let's see if we do segmentation sensitivity high. Let's see if we get more. No, let's go down lower. So, that doesn't make a difference. 
our best number is in the middle. And you can see that it's kind of got parts. It, it's picking up different shades. That is, you know, that's just the difference between the two types of digitizing. And this is what it has automatically created. So let's bring this down and let you see the difference between the two. If I go home and go import patterns from vector image and go back to that bat, you can see that the vector image did a much better job of grabbing the same colors and doing the same items. Now, I like the way it did satin stitches here, so I might come in and press my Alt key down and grab my um, ear and change it to a satin. Grab, put, click the Alt key and touch that, grab it and make it a satin stitch. So the Alt key is a different way of selecting things, just so you know. Um, you can select things in your sewing order window, but also if things are grouped, you can hold your alt key down on your keyboard and click on the area that you want to change and that will let you adjust it. Now, what can I do with an SVG file in BES4? Well, th that one's a little bit different. If I come in though, that last bat that I used, I have actual options. Now, I think I have to have a power pack on this one. And if we open up BES Blue, it will tell me. Hold on just a second and we'll do that first. I'm pretty sure I have to have Power Pack 2 or Power Pack 1 for import SVGs. I'll have to go look that up. I don't remember exactly when I got when I got that one. So let's come in here and go import. Yep, we can only import FCM files. We do know a way to work around around that. You can take it into Canvas Workspace, but if you have BES4 and you have, pop, I think it's the first power pack, gives you import artwork and you can bring in the BAT SVG. Not the same though, is it? So if we come in here, you have, you'll have to color things in. You have to remember what parts are what. Um, which can be rather challenging. Now, for BES4, I would not want all these little small pieces. And I'll tell you why here in just a second. If I try, actually, I'll leave one small piece in for you to see. So let's leave. I'm going to grab these three pieces right here. And I'm going to go to my arrange tab and I'm going to say combined. So, ooh, don't like that. We won't do that. We'll just leave it alone. That That's going to be my eyes. So let's see your body. Let's change its color to pink or tan. There we go. Now, this is going to be the mouth or the eyes, I guess. What's that? That's going to be something. Let's put a color on it so we can see what it is. Oh, the nose. And there's the mouth. And then these are speckles on his belly. We're not going to worry about those. Or on her belly. And let's make those pink. Okay. So now you can grab. I'm going to grab everything for right now and we're going to turn off the fill so you can see what we've got going on. So you can see we've got various parts. This is the wireframe basically of that digitizing. So if I want to come in and move my feet down to where I wouldn't have had that overlap, I could do that. Or I could have simply done, let's undo and undo. Let's grab the control, control, and let's go to the arrange and go transform and remove overlaps. That didn't do anything for me. Let's see if it does anything if I, come on, if I fill them in. Oh, let's weld them. What am I thinking? That's the easiest way. So now if we look here, my feet are now part of the whole thing. And if we want the 
these to be, let's just go ahead and do, so I'm leaving that one in for you guys to see. I can grab the whole thing, go to my tools tab and say convert to applique and it's converted the whole kit and caboodle to applique. Um, I don't know that I like where these are placed, so I might come move those up. And I certainly don't like the way the wings are, so let's see if we grab the this wing. But you see that little dip in that other one? Let's take and move this one. Now, you could then come in and do your remove overlaps to get rid of the overlaps, but you can see that little guy right there. That's that little spot I left in there that I said I didn't think would work very well. So I would delete it. Now, this has turned into an applique, not optimal for that. So I would probably convert to runs. That is a Power Pack 2 feature, I do believe. It's either one or two. Don't hold me to it, but there you go. So then you could come in, oops, undo, and grab those parts and turn them into a color. Change them into something besides applique material. You could then go and touch your scan and cut button, and these are the parts that would cut with a scan and cut. <clears throat> but I would personally futz with this just a little bit more. I might rotate that a little bit. just have to work just a little bit harder on this one. So let's go in and grab the whole kink caboodle. Oops. Let's just do all items. Right mouse click and say, oh, you're not going to let me. I guess we have to do the appliques only. So I'm holding my control key down. Now let's right mouse click and remove overlap stitches. We would take that down to zero. I still have some spots that are there, so I would probably undo that little guy one more time, take him and move him a little bit further. And let me show you another trick. Let's home and let's zoom in. Select that piece, this one right here. Let me have you. And we'll go to our tools tab and we'll edit our shape. And we can take and move that shape to where it fits there, right mouse click there we go. Now I'm going to add a point right here so that it bends with the rest of it. Right mouse click so that it gets in place. Then let's look at this. If we select it and remove the overlap stitches, we should have what we want. So if I take and move this away, oh, undo. When I clicked off of it, it made a weird thing. Remove overlap stitches. I guess I have to select both parts. That might help us. So there you go. Now, now you don't have that space underneath there like you had before. All right. Um, so that is SVGs and what you can do with them. Now, if you have... Um, Power Pack tool, you have an auto image tracer that does PNG files and it will convert those to artwork for you to be able to use in BES4. What can I use them for, you say? Well, you can use them as cutting files, but you can also use those. Let's hit finish. There we go to convert them to appliques. So there is my boo. Convert to applique, depending on the PNG will depend on how well it works. But there you go. That was a simple, easy way to get something in. And that is a Power Pack 2 feature. Okay. So questions on that? No? All right. So um, I'll talk a little bit about Font Creator Program. And then we'll move on. So let's go to minimize this and go up. 
actually, I think I already have the font creator program open, but if you go option font creator, that's where you get it. I'll do, I'm going to do the easy stuff today and we'll talk about more difficult things another day. Um, what is the font creator for? It's for being, being able to, you can either font map or you can create new fonts. We're going to create a new font <clears throat> today. Now, where can I get my fonts from? Well, I can bring in background images of letters. Or if I have a true type font that's not converting well for me in the in um, layout and editing, I can come in and do true type font creator and come down through here and find one. So let's say my athletic one wasn't doing well. I can choose regular, italic, or bold and say OK. And it has auto generated that for me, just so you all understand that it is. It's already created it. Now, if I want to go to the view tab, let's come here and show you. So you see how it has already made the stitches and everything for me. Now, this is fill mode. This is framework. If you look at your preview window, this is what your font's going to look like. Now, if I go to my home tab and go to this B character, I need to do that. And then I need to convert from true type font. So you have to do that for each character in the character map. Otherwise, you do not have it. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Um, someone sent Brother um, Support a font that they thought they had created. Well, they had done a logo all on the letter A. So that did not actually work. And you see, I'm just coming in here and converting each letter. If I want to make adjustments to that letter, I can come in with my select point tool and I can make any adjustments that I want. If it does not convert well, so if it didn't convert well in layout and editing, it's some of them are probably not going to convert well here. So let's take this as a for instance. That's terrible. OK, that would not be one that I would let do the auto because you can see that is a mess. Let me make it a little bit. Let me see if I can make it bigger for you. Yes, there we go. So this is how that one's going to stitch out. Not optimal down there, is it? So that is when it comes in. That's when you being able to manually digitize things comes into play. And that's what the font creator allows us to do. So what I would do is I would grab my block punch tool. And since this is a pretty much a straight line one, I would come in and punch. I'm left clicking each time on each side. When I kind of get to the corners, you, I'm, I'm not doing perfect, so I'll show you how to adjust here in a minute. But I'm simply left clicking to go around this. And you don't want all of your stitches to get jumbled up in that corner so you can see how I'm moving past it. Let's see if I hold my shift key down what it does for us. Not much. Not a thing. And I would kind of ease this in here. You can see how I'm not going all the way to that corner because that would not make sense because I'm going to take, I'm going to now travel up to here and come back down. So to travel, I'm going to come back to my manual punch tool and I'm going to grab my running tool. Shortcut is the V key on your keyboard and it tells you right as you go there. So I can either click on this or I could use my V key and travel up. Now I can go back to the straight and go straight across. and double click to finish it off. So let's look and see what this one looks like. If we go to our preview window and open it up, 
that looks a whole lot better than what was manually generated for us, even though I haven't finessed it. So if I come in here and finesse it with my select point tool, I can then come in and manipulate my nodes that I put in to perfect it. And you have total control here. So I will let it auto generate as many of them as it can. But if it's if it's something that looks awful, then I'll come in and I'll fix that one particular letter. And a lot of times I'll just fix that letter in font mapping. I'll let the rest of, and then substitute it. So I'll talk, show you what I'm talking about. So let's save this one. We're, we're going to leave it alone and just save it as it is now. And I'll do a save as, even though I haven't got the whole thing done. Um, I need to save it in my font creator program. So let's go to the PC, Windows, Program Files, x86, Brother, PDesign 11, My Font. And we'll call this one, what do we want to call this one? Athletic. Okay. So now if I go into P Design 11, let's close what we've done here and start a whole new window. Why did I do that? So that my font would show up. So let me go and show you what I mean. So I'm going to type in ABCQ. <laughs> and this was the font that I was helping somebody. And you can see I typed in the A and their whole logo came in. That's not what was optimal. So let's come in and let's go down and find the athletic font. So there's the athletic font. And let's look at that. Real, let me just change shape sizes so you can see. So you can see how that Q would stitch out terribly. If I just want to substitute that Q, I can simply click on its node in the center, that little diamond in the center, come to my fonts, go down to the UD fonts. Those are user defined, user designed, whatever you want to consider that, whatever floats your boat. I do believe it's user designed and look for my athletic one. So here's my athletic one. There's the cue that I did. So that's how I will use it many times. I mean, instead of manually punching everything, I'll work with what I've got and see what works best. Then if there's specific letters that don't generate well, then I'll go back and fix them. I have had fonts that don't convert well at all, not a single letter. And those I've gone back and done the entire, the entire alphabet for manually digitizing them. But that's what you need to keep in mind. So if I look back over at my font creator program, things that you need to know about this. Let's zoom out. The space in the center is where you're going to create things. This is an ascender line. So it, anything that's going to be above, it's like your apostrophes, you would put partially in the ascent over the ascender line. The descender line would be your commas and things like that. That's where you would place those. This is the space between, this is the space of your letter. You obviously have control of that with kerning. But if you want to make sure it's in the center, you can come and take it and move it over. I tend to leave it wherever it's mapped because usually that's the way it's going to work. Okay. All right. So, um, yes, thanks, Anne. Don't forget to don't forget to hit like, share this to your page. Please don't share me to inside groups unless they it's a group that they want to be that has any interest in this because. Somebody shared in my group today something very bizarre, and that's not cool, okay? But please like and share. We always like, to, you know, the, our my channel is growing. I always like to see things grow, um, especially when I started this a few years ago. I didn't think I'd have 10 people watching. So, you know, hey, we're going pretty good. Um, and glad you enjoyed the instructions here, Susan. So... Let's do one last thing. I can kind of talk about creating one more time um, edge to edge quilting designs. 
So the first thing on an edge to edge quilting design that you would have to decide is what hoop size are you planning on using? So let's hit, why is that not working? Delete, there we go, thank you. So let's select our hoop size. I'm gonna say we're gonna go in the eight by 12 inch hoop today. Now, what I personally would do is put up center grid lines. And to start, you might want to show your grid and you might want to snap to grid. Just so that your line will, will snap to where you want it to go. And let's keep, let's increase our grid size a little bit here. So I'm not quite, uh, there we go. Now I'm right smack dab in the middle on both of those. Okay, let's go back up just a little. I'm trying to get, there we go. So I'm trying to get right to the edge there. Your big thing is you want to start here and you want to end here in a place that you would like. I'm not going to, I'm actually going to turn off, turn off the snap to grid function for right now. Um, and these will not, these will not mathematically work through the Luminaire 3. These would be like ones that you purchase. So just keep that in mind. And I'm just going to come in and draw a shape. I'm just trying to kind of fill up the space here, gang. Now, the big thing is, this is the point where I would put on snap to grid for just a second. Home, select tool, select point. You want to make sure, oops, I didn't want to add that point. You want to make sure that that's that each of these two points right here are snapping to grid. That's because that's how it will connect. So if I come and take this whole thing, just so you kind of get an idea, I'm going to do control and shift. You're trying to make it to where those two line up. And I don't like the way those that came together. So let's go to take off snap to grid for a second. And then we can come in and futz with this one. Obviously, this is not my best work. I'll show you another thing that you can do with this in a second, though. But you're really kind of looking at how those two connect. That is your biggest thing that you want to keep in mind. Now, what could you do along that path instead of just a big old satin stitch, which is not what we want? You can come in and grab that stitch. You can go to your shapes tab and you can change it to a motif stitch. Then you can come in and go to your sewing attributes and you can come in and grab a motif. I'll grab one from my fall collection. So you can increase the space between those. Now I've got quite a few. You can have them going every other one going every other direction. You can have them flipping towards each other. You can um, change the offset of them if you need to. But I'm a little bit too far out. So here's where I'll come back in and look at it again. <clears throat> go back to the view tab, snap to grid. I'm going to go to my home tab, select, select point, and move this to where it will work. So 
Let's change that to the top of the line instead of the center of the line. That didn't change anything. Okay. Change. Oh, nope. Don't want it at the bottom line. So for this one, I might move it over like that. And I would play with my placement. Let's, let's turn off snap to grid. Because I'm not trying to get that first one. You can maintain aspect ratio and change the size of those. That would mean I need to move that over a little bit. And let's increase the spacing again. Manipulate. And your goal is to make sure all of your cats are staying in your design space, but are actually making quilting motions. And there you go. So now let's take this and go to our select tool, select point, and let's zoom out. Take this, move it over with my, sh actually I need to do a control and a shift. Let's undo that. Control and shift. Now we match up. Uh, this tell it shows you that when you match up, that would go over the top of that line. So that would tell me that I probably need to manipulate that a little bit more. So let's come back, select point, take this guy right here and move him in a bit. So, I mean, there's not a magic button for this one, guys. All right, let me grab this again. Let's delete that one. Control and shift. There you go. So now it's the whole thing's going to work. So, um, <clears throat> does that make sense for you there? Um, do I need to add any allowance for the foot when designing edge to edge? Um, you might want to give yourself some wiggle room. I mean, obviously I went, I designed for the eight by 12 inch hoop. So if I'm using a bigger hoop, then I have more space to play with. Um, I would not design for the 10 and five eighths by 16, just simply because that is going to be more, that's going to be your most challenging. Um, and it would be, you you wouldn't have as much wiggle room and you want to have you do want to have some wiggle room so if you're doing the 10 and 5 8 by 16 i'd probably pick the nine and nine and a half by 14 inch hoop to do if you're doing the 7 by 12 i might choose um the 6 by 10 inch hoop to hoop to design in just so that you have that extra wiggle room you need when you need to resize and re you know basically move things around that gives you some manipulation room okay so i mean that's how i would personally do it um i mean obviously i did not take a lot of time mapping out how i wanted to draw that making things go but that gives you something that you could use you there's plenty of motifs that are built into the software that you could play with i just happen to pick let's pick let me change this to the color to a different color so you can actually see it how about that so um, I just picked one that was in my fall because that's what was up. Oops. And you can see when I'm 
when I played with that one spot, I messed this spot right here up. There you go. So now that's back to being okay. Um, let's go one more time and let's control shift and take it over. And let's take it over this way as well, just so we can see. So yeah, that would line up on all sides. And that gives you an easy way to look at it. If I turn off my grid now, you can see that I just, that everything is attached. I would probably need to work just a little bit. If you look right here. Oops, let me zoom out. If you look right here, my my two are not are not lined up together. So I would go to view, I would snap to grid, and I would grab the select point tool and click on that one. Oops. Ah, you're gonna be ornery. Come on, give me. Thank you. Then I would check this end. But that way you know that they're going to snap to the same, that it's going to be in the same spot, which would mean I probably want to futz with this over here just a little bit. Let's turn off the snap to grid. Select point. Come on, give me that. Pick the right one. Thank you. Now that should snap to that grid. Oh, no, I turned it off, didn't I? Hold on, let's turn snap to grid back on. That should snap to that grid spot, and it does. So let's try it again. Oh, undo. And let's turn off snap to grid and take it over. Control and shift. Now, if we turn off the grid, you can see that they're right there together. Okay. All right. Good. I'm glad that you can do that. Um, let's see here. Special code or discount for fall motifs. Um, hmm. I do not have one today, but hold on. Let me see if I can find, let me, give me just a second and I'll see if I can get you one. Real quick, <clears throat> um, hang tight. And what's today's date? Today is the 24th. So this one's good for a week. Okay, here you go. All right, so there's your coupon code. I'll put it on a banner for you. There you go. And that one's good this week. <clears throat> it So, um, all right, if there's nothing else today, guys, I do need to get going. So thank you all for watching today. <laughs> You're too funny, Patty. I, um, remember... Not all SVG files are created equally. So if you get one that you don't like, then don't work with it because there's plenty of things out there that you can play with.
Okay. All right. Um, and you should not need wiggle room for your foot because the, the um, space that you have in the hoop is going to be the space that you have to embroider. So it's kept, it, it knows what your embroidery field is. You should not have to worry about your foot. Okay. So thanks, Anne. Be sure and tell that. Um, tell people to like everything and we shall talk to you next. No. Okay. So for those of you who are going to be in Houston next week, stop by the All Brands booth. I will be there all week demoing the Scan and Cut. Um, you'll, my live stage presentations will be on my connection, I do believe. So be sure to tune into their live stream. We'll be going live every day from Houston. Um, and that's where I'll be next week. The next week is iffy because I'll be coming back from Houston and headed to Nova. So if you're going to be in Nova, once again, I'll be there demoing any brother machine at Nova. Um, so if you're going to be at the Nova Sewing Expo, Nova, so what is it these days? It's Nova Original Sewing and Quilting Expo, I believe is what it is. Um, so if you're going to be there, come by and see me there. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later and I will talk. Uh, I'll see you after Houston. Bye bye.